Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I am so excited to be here with you to support you as you become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. This morning, I was going through and playing with some of my fun activities. There's dot to dots and mazes and all sorts of puzzles that are inside these activity books. If you are interested in getting one of these free books, it's super easy. You see that address that's popping up on the bottom of your screen? All you need to do is send me a letter. You can let me know, maybe it's something you're learning at school, something you've learned here at PBS, or maybe it's just a book that you wanna share with me and let me know why you've enjoyed reading it. I'd love to hear your letter, and when I receive it, I'll make sure that I put one of these fun activity books in the mail for you. Now, if you decide to send me an email, don't forget to include that return address so I can make sure that you get one of these. Okay, speaking of books and reading, here in Fresno Unified, we love to celebrate our readers. We're always encouraging you to check out your books through your county library or through a free app that we have called Sora. And we've got some schools. We count down the top five schools that have been checking out books through Sora. And today we're gonna reveal who is in the second place, and that is Ewing Elementary. So great job, Ewing. If you'd like to see your school listed on our shout out uh, board here for the top checking out schools, it's super easy to do. All you need to do is check out those books and tell a classmate or two, and then you guys can help get your school listed. Okay, I have three things that we're gonna go through and practice today. We're gonna look at compound words, syllables, and then finish off with root words, a little comprehension with that. Are you ready to start today? Okay, let's get out and practice. Let's warm up those brains looking at our high frequency words. Now remember, high frequency words are simply that. They're words you're gonna come across often. In third grade, it's really important that you're not able to just, just be able to read them, but you need to be able to spell them correctly. So if you see a word up here, Make sure you jot it down, practice it. And you know, I know that many of you have been doing that. So great job, keep that up. I love that you're showing that you are responsible for your learning. Okay, let's go through and let's read them together. Here we go. Was, warm, wash, walk, water, way, went, well, were, and where. Nicely done. Okay, today we are over here, we're doing went and well. Went is W-E-N-T and well is W-E-L-L. -L. Okay, let's use them in a couple of sentences. I thought today's lessons went mmm and he mmm to the grocery store yes or to the store yesterday. So would we say he well to the grocery or he well to the store yesterday? No, we would say he went to the store yesterday, and I thought today's lessons went well. All right, excellent job. Okay, third grade today, we're gonna talk about compound words and syllables. So let's start with compound words. Remember, compound words are simply that. There's two words uh, that are put together, and they make up a new word. Okay, let's think about these today. So. When we think about the word hand, we know that our, um, our hand is simply that, something we have. Um, and writing, um, well, you can even look right here, like I've got some writing on this piece of paper, but when we put hand and writing together, it now makes a new word, handwriting. And you can see what Mrs. Nix's handwriting looks like because all of these were written by me. They weren't done by a computer or anything. So that's what my handwriting looks like. I'm curious what your handwriting looks like. Maybe when you write those letters, I can see them. All right, then we've got bear, which means um, 
empty or, or um, not covered, it's just bare. And then we've got foot, and that would be like where your toes and things that you walk on. Okay, so then we put that together and we've got a bare foot. Well, that just simply means that your foot doesn't have any socks or shoes, right? You have a bare foot. Okay, last one, we've got basket. So if you think about a basket, um, you might have a waste basket or, or a basket where you, you collect things. Um, it's usually woven together. And then you've got a ball, um, any kind of round ball, a soccer ball, a basketball. So in this case, we put basket and ball together and we now have a sport that we refer to basketball. Remember in basketball, they do use a basket to throw like a little hoop. Okay, when we come down here, we're gonna talk about some syllables. Now, when a word ends with a consonant followed by L-E or ul, the consonant plus the L-E usually form the last syllable of the word. Okay, now, there's different ways you can spell that ul at the end. L-E is one of them. You can also do E-L, A-L, and I-L. So I have examples using all three of those spellings. So let's look right here. We've got the word scribble. Now, I'm looking right here. I've got the L-E at the end. I'm gonna put that consonant that comes right before the L-E, and that makes that be its syllable all by itself. So I'm gonna spread it apart just a little bit so we can see that there are two syllables. Scribble, okay. Same can be done with kennel. You see the E-L at the end? That has that O sound at the end, so I'm gonna put the final consonant goes with the E-L, so we split it apart and we have kennel, two syllables. How about this one? Rental, see that O at the end, the A-L? I'm gonna take that final consonant, which is a T, and that makes our final syllable, so we have rental. And then the last one, See, we've got the I-L, so it's gonna take that final consonant, which is a C, and we have two syllables, pencil. Kinda helps with our spelling, too, when we know how to divide our words into those syllables. Okay, let's look and let's do a little bit of practice with some of these compound words and the syllables that we've been practicing. So, there are a whole lot of little words that are up here, and so this is one of those activities that especially at home, when you come across small words, you can make as many words. In those activity books, you're gonna find things like this where you can go through and you can make up some of your own words out of other words. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so let's look and see if we can make a few today. So just looking here, we have words like wind, birth, thumb, news, time. So I'm gonna go through and, and kind of help us out a little bit because I know that it's a lot for you to be able to see. So when I look here and I see the word wind, wind, I know I can put wind with, hmm, how about this one over here? How about wind shield? Okay, a windshield is something that is on the front of our cars, right? It's that glass that covers it up. So when we put it together, it shields us from the wind, right? It's a wind shield. Okay, I'm gonna cross them off because now I've used them. Okay, we've done birthday several times, so I might skip that one, but how about thumb? Can you think of a compound word that we would use with thumb? Okay, I'm gonna give us a clue. Let's go over here and look at, the, at this column here. So we've got thumb day, mm, no. Thumb ever, no. Thumb coach, no. How about a thumbnail? Do you have a thumbnail? Yeah, it's just that nail that's right there on your thumb. So let's put it together. And now we have thumb nail. Look at that, excellent job. How about, let's do another one. Um, we've done news, how about time? Time, what could we put with time? How about, ooh, let's look over here. On this column, we've got time writing, time out, Oh yes, how about time and out? Do you ever take a time out, maybe when you're playing a game and you need to take a, a quick break? Yes, all right, let's do one more, one more. How about, um, 
Well, ooh, look right here. What about we have the word stage and the word hand. Do you know what a stage hand is? It's a person who, oops, I started spelling all my words together. Let's try it again. Stage, see if I can spell that together. Stage, hand. So when you're working on a stage, sometimes you need someone who's gonna be able to help you. They're gonna give you an extra hand, a stage hand. Excellent. Okay, let's look down here below. So this one, we have all of these words here and some of them do not have that consonant L-E-E-L-A-L or I-L at the end. So we're gonna put an X on any of them that don't have that. And then we're gonna sort our words. We're gonna kind of do it together as we go along. So do we see that final syllable with the um, A-L-I-L-E-L -L -E -L in pupil? We do, so I'm just gonna move it right now and I'm gonna put it over here. How about people? Do you see it? Yeah, it's got the L-E, so we're gonna move it. How about angel? Does it have the O at the end? It does, and it's got the E-L, so let's move it over here. How about animal? Yes, it's got the A-L, good. How about elephant? Nope, that one does not. How about channel? Yes, it's got the E-L, good. Keep going, middle has L-E, so we're gonna move it over here. Pencil has the I-L, and I'm gonna put it right there. See how much fun it is to be able to move all of those things? You could do things like that when you're at home with your words. Now, I do wanna finish off today with some root word practice. So this is that comprehension piece. What's a root word? Well, it's the simplest form of a word simply means that there's no prefix, no suffix, no inflectional endings have been added to the word. It's just by itself. And when we get that root word by itself, oftentimes we know what that word means and we can start to put it all back together like a puzzle and make it make sense. Okay, so let's look at um, a sentence here. Oh, you can't remember what prefixes and suffixes are? No worries, I wrote a little cheat sheet down here. Prefixes are at the beginning, like un, re, and dis. Suffixes are at the end, like full and able, and inflectional endings are simply ing, ed, uh, things of that nature. Okay, so let's look. Here's our sentence. She was overjoyed to find out she won the prize. So let's look. Are there any prefixes? Yes, over is a prefix. How about, are there any suffixes? No but do you see the inflectional ending? I do, it's the ED, perfect. So what does our word joy mean? That's right, just joy, happiness. So joyed means that it happened in the past and over means a whole lot. So if you're overjoyed, it means that you are full of joy um, abundantly. All right, excellent job. So thanks for hanging out with me today as you're getting ready for school. Remember, you are responsible for your learning success. So listen, ask questions, and share your ideas because together we can do so much more. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. brand new day time to learn